Welcome back, Explorers! I'm David, that's Wesley, and this is the Trailcast. The weekly show that gets so far off track, you'll have to stick around to see just where we end up. And today we're talking about Parks and Rec! Oh... Wait, what? what? like Parks and Rec? The answer's supposed to be no. Um, okay then. Shit, shit, was it really a good idea to bring Maggie on here with all her dad jokes? I mean, well, uh, I, I know I, that I our think, audience I think, I think we should, uh, I think we well, should start off by it. If they're dad jokes for me, that means they're uncle jokes for you. That's true. I, I feel like true. that makes it we, worse, we, we, we should probably go ahead and just go ahead and introduce Maggie, because... People no, I want to wait till about midway through the show. Because people who don't like know, be know we're going to be people who don't actually know what's dramatic life effect. are going to be very confused. I'm going to be ignoring you, Wesley. Um. Oh, okay, like you always do. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so uh, yeah, welcome our special guest, uh, Maggie. That was very Hi. awkward. But no, she's she's our cousin. <laughs> um, you're awkward, David. It's okay. I'm one yeah, of them. One of them. Let's ask them the cousins they have on the side of the family that they're related. If that makes sense. I guess on our mom's, our mom, me and his mom's side. I, I, yeah, you're you're the odd one out. I know I'm the only one. I feel like we got the fact that Maggie's our cousin out of the way, um, despite the fact that I wanted to insert that in the middle of the podcast for suspense. Well, yeah, but no one likes you. Oh. Maggie said she liked the idea. No one Look at her. It's I'm okay, just... David. Okay, okay, See, but I'm the producer think... here, so I mean, it, it doesn't seem like I'm. You know, I don't even know. I'm not the I'm not a celebrity. I'm just I'm just your cousin, so it invalidates. I'm all my knowledge. Uh, right. Okay. All right. Anyway, well, I as guess... much of a train wreck as this introduction has been, um. Let's go ahead and jump into the main topic of uh, what we're talking about. Um, Wesley, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Start us off with what? What are your thoughts on Parks and Rec as someone who finished it last? I actually... Yes, I I, I just finished watching it last night. Um, David, I want to ask real quick... Be, uh, yeah, I know you're asking my opinion, but to give my opinion, I need to ask what your opinion is. And Maggie, Maggie, you can you can also um, you can also give give uh, what you think about this too. The finale, because obviously I watched that last night. What are y'all thought y'all's thoughts on the finale of Parks and Rec? Oh, of any of those sitcoms like The Office, Community, Parks and Rec, any of those, Com- Parks and Rec has the best. It, it's it's hands down the okay. best. Maggie. Well. I like it. I don't know if it's better than the Office finale. See, that was exactly what me and Sarah were talking about last night, and I wanted to bring that up to David because I, I here's the thing. I thought the ending of season six should have been it. Like, I thought that was a good place to leave it. Season seven, like it was thirteen episodes. It really felt like, hey, we're making a little bit more just to make more. I didn't think it was bad, but the Office. And I, it might be more nostalgia, so I do want to put that out there. I've, I watched The Office first, and I, I have more of an attachment to The Office. But I, 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 as the finale goes, I think The Office did better than Parks and Rec. I and watched, I still feel like I want more. I watch Parks and Rec first. Same. Um, so I have the nostalgia towards Parks and Rec. I love Parks and Rec. But mm. uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know, I think the, the way they ended The Office was just more emotional yeah. than Parks um so that's why i like it more i think it just like really tugs on your heartstrings the most Mm -hmm. but and i also agree i think the last season of parks and rec is kind of random um i didn't like the like 
the futuristic side of things with it. Like, it was okay, mm -hmm. but I didn't really care for it. Like, with Grizzle and all, like, it moved the plot forward, but I didn't really care for, like, you know, the holographic phones and stuff like that. I was like, you're really, you're, you're not supposed to be that kind of show. Like, it felt, like like Maggie said, it, it felt off, like, most of the rest less of the last season. I mean, I do, of course, I love the ending. I love mm -hmm. up at the end, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's a good full circle moment and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah I, I don't. I, th I think. I think. Go ahead. There's just less emotional, I guess, of an yeah. ending. My, my thought on it was like because they did the time jumps to where you found out where everyone was in so many years. Like, yeah, I liked seeing where they were years down the road. But like one thing with the office that you don't really see is like it leaves it open. You know, you don't know where the characters are going to be. I kind of like it being a little bit more open than thus. Like, you know, at the end of the, sh the show, they show where Gary, Larry, Jerry, whatever his name is, uh, is, you know, he's, <laughs> he dies at 100 years old. You know, it's like, well, that's nice to know that he lives that time. He's the mayor the whole time, yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, I kind of would like to just kind of have, you know, yeah. No, no closure with it all. Just kind of an open-ended show where it's like, hey, they're in a good spot right now, and they're all separating. They're going their own separate ways because that's kind of how life is. Like you, you're with people for a certain amount of time, and then you know, you, you go about your separate ways later on down the road. And you know, like like with the office, it 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 is more emotional because you're seeing the group of people that you've you know watched for however many seasons break up now, and you know. And that it, it happens, but I feel like Friends is too. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. watch Friends, but it's like they're all together, and it's in the place where like the majority of the time it is, and you just yeah. like see them all, and that's what makes it that emotional. It's like the time that you spent with these characters is over. Um yeah. And Parks and Rec, you don't really get that, but I, I mean, it's cool that you get to know where they end up, but that emotionalness of watching something that was comforting to mm -hmm. you end, yeah. Um, I, I will say though, as a whole, Parks and Rec is a better show than The Office, like yeah. episode to episode storylines and all. But like, I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that the main character of Parks and Rec was there the whole time, whereas Michael left, you know, the uh, before the end of the series. Now, obviously, we got like Scott's Tots and other episodes that are kind of weird and cringy, but you still, you still like watching the show. You still love Michael. You know, and stuff like that. So, and and that, that's one I will thing say that's that. Big... Oh, sorry, you go, you go ahead, Maggie. I was. Like, I think that is a big difference between The Office and Parks and Rec. That makes it Parks and Rec a little bit better. There's no character in The Office that I necessarily like the whole time, except for like Creed. It's funny, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? But yeah, only, I'm like, oh, I would want to be around them and stuff. But mm -hmm. Parks and Rec, they're a little bit more relatable and people you want to be friends with i mean they're funny and exaggerative yeah do, but they're more people you're like oh i'd want to hang out with them well i was mm. thing i think me and david talked about and we need to let maybe david speak a little bit here because <laughs> we've been keeping him quiet this whole time but uh that was one thing when we talked about the office that i think i mentioned we've talked about the office before and i mentioned this before uh where like shows like parks and rec or shows like um brooklyn 99 like there's not really a specific character that you just don't like out of the main cast but like with the office you know you start off really liking jim and pam but then as the series go on sometimes they get a little bit iffy and like michael's in and out sometimes as, as a good character sometimes as a, as a character you don't really care for dwight by the end of the series in my opinion is my favorite character you know by the end of the series but at the beginning of the series you know uh, there's a line somewhere in, in it where Jim's like, you know, that, well, Dwight deserves all the pranks that I'm giving him. It's like, well, at the beginning of the series, you, you feel that way, too. You're like, yeah, he deserves all that. He's, you know, it's, he's he's being the way he is. He deserves being pranked. But by the end of the series, you love him. So, it's like, it's kind of the fluctuation, whereas, like, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and, and Parks and Rec don't really have those kind of a characters, um, which I think does kind of elevate the show a little bit. You know, it's kind of funny that uh, y'all are comparing it to The Office so much because I, because w when Parks and Rec first came out, 
that was one of the reasons that it, why it had it didn't have such, as good of ratings is because everyone what you know because it was air it started airing when the office was in its prime, and so yeah, that's a hard time. But everyone was comparing it to the office, and. Mm. It's a very different show. Uh, you can see in season one, it's it was trying to copy The Office. It, it, it was. But that's why season one wasn't as good. In season two, when it started to kind of make it its own thing, it, that's when Parson Rec really became what it is. And I think season two, up until season seven, you know, like, you know, season seven was last season. It was just that, that whole stretch right there. What just was at its height. It never really well, had think, a dip the same way The Office did. Yeah, um, and I, I would agree with that, but I think the, the reason that it gets compared to The Office so much now is because shows, well, like, the shows I group together when I compare across the board will be uh, Parks and Rec, The Office, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Those three are kind of very in the same, similar veins. Now, Brooklyn Nine-Nine doesn't have, like, you know, the mockumentary, like, style that, like, even Parks and Rec has, like, with the cuts, you know, and stuff like that. They don't have that in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so that's, like, a little bit of a separate show. But because they started copying, you know, whatever, however they went about doing it, copying The Office, it's it has a completely different way of telling the story, yes, but it's still very close in that realm of The Office and you know, can get compared very easily, you know, even even just stylistically to The Office. <clears throat> well, really, it's the whole... The reason they're similar and in the same similar genre is it's the whole, like, people in a workplace, people mm-hmm. setting, and they're, like, making a whole sitcom out of this setting. It's the same thing for um, Superstore, which to me was not as good. Yeah. I never really watched AP Bio, but it's the same. Like, it's the same genre. Um mm-hmm. But, and I would say community, tr- that's another thing about community. Community tried to start to be in the same genre, and then they made their own complete amazing thing. Oh, the- community yeah. is way out there, but yeah. Yeah, so the community is like all over the place, and it's it's its own thing. It, but com- community but, is amazing, but yeah. Do, do, we have, do we have that on the schedule anywhere? Because we need to talk about uh, community. I believe we have it on schedule for next month. Next month, okay. Well, I need probably freshen up a little bit on community, but that um, is an amazing show. Me and Sarah watched through it uh, a couple months ago. Uh, she hadn't seen it, but now she has. She has been blessed. Yes, community is, is on the schedule for July twenty fourth. So, if y'all uh, would like to hear about that? Come back then. <clears throat> about it, I love hearing people talk about community. It's a genius show. Uh, I don't want to get too far off track with from from parks and rec but david you were talking about the the new show uh was it animal control with joe McHale? yeah yeah uh, that's a really good show i saw i i told sarah that we need to start watching it because you you recommended it is is that kind of in, in a similar vein to like brooklyn 99 parks and rec like that okay I, like, so uh, obviously it's still in its first season and like shows like the office and parks and rec I'm not going to judge it too heavily just based off the first season. Yeah. But I think it has the potential to be one of these shows that, like, it's just, you know, amazing like that. Yeah. Well, that's good because a lot of shows nowadays just tend to, they're just not that good. So having a, a show out there that is a show like these others, you know, in, in, a, in today's you know how things are with TV and all. It, it if is, I had, uh, if I had, if I had to describe it, it would be almost a cross between Brooklyn Nine Nine and Parks and Rec, because okay. it's about it's about like you know the animal this animal control. Pr- they run mm-hmm. it pretty. They run it like a police precinct. Like they take it so <laughs> seriously that it's almost like they're they're pretend they're, they're almost like they're cops. But uh, oh, that's yeah, funny. they. they uh, but then you know you've also got a lot of the um like city government stuff or some of the city government yeah. stuff that you do in Parks and Rec. So I, that's why I would compare. I would to say, that. I, I, just, I like. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I'm just imagining the two guys who run Animal Control and Parks and Rec having their own TV show, and I know that's <laughs> a 
close to what you're talking about, but that's what's happening in my brain. Yeah, those guys are. are oh, fun. honestly, They're like always, a show about a show about them would be okay. Well, actually, take the back. A show about them would be very chaotic. <laughs> Let's just say yeah. that. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure you could do a show like uh, with them as characters in the style of like when community got real crazy and you can just blame it on them being high all the time. <laughs> you know? Like, Ugh. there's an episode where they're claymation. Well, why? Because they're high. <laughs> you know? But, uh, let's, before we get too far off, uh, off track, uh, let, let's bring it back to, uh, community. We're brainstorming um, about an episode, uh, TV show, David. We're pitching a, a TV show <laughs> just to branch off of Parks and Rec. It's okay. Remember? <laughs> and, Leslie kills the town because they're having the gala that night, and uh, oh, the um, the birds, yeah, and then, oh, yeah, and she's like, no, not actually, <clears throat> and they're just ready to go out there and kill the birds. That that part's funny. Yeah, and that was one of the earlier episodes, but that was one of the like really good ones from from like er, like. Because I think that episode was in season. No, wait. No, that's not an early episode. one. I'm thinking that's of a different episode. Like... No. Yeah, You're that's right, episode. Yeah. Was... That's well, not the episode. It's the episode before, technically, but yeah. 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 <clears throat> but uh, talking about the characters in Parks and Rec, and I never mean just side characters, but the um main cast of Parks and Rec it, that, that that's what makes the show is the, the main ki- the main characters mm-hmm. like the the whole dynamic between how they all interact and stuff like you know Leslie's enthusiasm for government work and stuff and uh you know Ron's contrasting uh just Ron Swanson this <laughs> um, yeah you know um and then Oh, Andy. Andy oh, makes Andy. that show. Andy is great. Andy is yeah. amazing. Yeah. What's really funny is um, Chris Pratt is so Andy in that show that anytime I watch something with Chris Pratt in it, I feel like it's Andy acting as a different character. <laughs> well, because I feel Macklin. like I feel like Andy or I feel like uh, I feel like uh, Chris Pratt was just playing himself. Like, honestly. <laughs> because, like... <laughs> yeah. And some of my... Some of, uh... Some of the funniest, like, one-liners from the show were from Andy. Just the, um... You know, like... Hey, Leslie, I put your uh, symptoms into the computer and it says you may have network connectivity problems. <laughs> that is one of the best lines in the show. I uh, say uh, with, with Andy, the relationship that uh, Andy and April have is like top tier. I, I, I love slightly I love that. really great. <laughs> yeah, what's well, the thing? It's like and, and like what they they end up getting married in like what is it season what three two or three somewhere? There? It's like pretty early I on. I think it's season three. Yeah, three. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, and and like they get married kind of on a whim. And they hadn't been dating that long, but they last the whole series. And at the end of the series, you see that they, you know, are married for much longer. It's like, their relationship is just so great. And they, like, their personalities uh, contrast very well together, you know, like. And and how April plays along with a lot of, like, Andy's, you know, nonsense sometimes. And I don't know. They, they, their dynamic is, is as uh, a lot of times it tends to be, like, a B-plot, is really, really, like... Like you said, like Andy makes the show. I think their relationship really makes you know the show in some of the later later seasons. Some when of they the focus fun- in on it more. The funniest stuff is when Ben's looks at them. Yes, that's hilarious because <laughs> Ben's Ben's Benness with the two of them and their childhood. Yeah, it's so it's, funny. It's funny. <laughs> uh, ben has a lot of great uh, interactions with. Well, with everyone, because like I love, uh, mm-hmm. I still love Ben and uh, Tom's dynamic of like, you know, 
because Tom thinks he's a, you know, Tom keeps calling him like a loser and a nerd, basically. Yeah. What was it? Uh, <laughs> since we were just and, watching the just watching the um, the finale or whatever, they cut to Tom's future and he's talking to you know his board or whatever of like advisors and Ben's on it and he's like accounting nerd. He's like, can you just call me Ben? I am a I'm a congressman and he's like. No, accounting nerd. And it's like, you know, that's just kind of. It doesn't matter how big or bad Ben gets. It's like, no, you're 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 who I say you are. I will say a really good addition to the show in the later years, Craig. Oh yes, Craig. Hello. Craig was amazing. Yeah, his uh, you talk about like the energy with uh Leslie. It's like. It's like that on Adderall almost. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's the only good part of um, I can't remember. It's Pawnee and um, Eagleton. He's the only good part of Eagleton. <laughs> yeah, it, usually I feel like when shows add characters later on, it's usually some, a lot of times you're just like, why? But yeah. he was a good one. I was thinking about it though, um, because I think wasn't it when they were doing the merger. Wasn't it him and Donna? They were the counterparts, right? For yeah. for thing. I was like thinking uh, when we were watching through it, and they were you know cutting and and just having one person. I was like, is Donna about to leave the show? Because I was like, they're they're really pushing Craig here. I was like, is Donna about to leave? And then you know, they meshed it all together. And I was like, okay, good. Because I was like, Craig has to stay, but like I don't want Donna to leave. <laughs> oh, Don Donna. See, Donna's one of the side characters that like. You know, she doesn't really have a whole lot of, you know, she's not really the main focal point of any episodes, but she's got so much, like, just presence in the show that yeah. just, yeah. You know. Very loud personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's interesting, I think, in Parks and Rec is you have people who don't have loud personalities. And I find that really interesting because a lot of times... In these kind of TV shows, you have people with very big personalities and very exaggerated personalities. But you got a few characters in there that aren't too crazy. So I think that's interesting. Um, but I was going to say, like, Ron Swanson is, like, one of the main characters. And let's be honest here, how much do we really know about Ron Swanson? I mean, you learn a lot as the series go on, but you know a lot more about other characters. He just is so hush hush. I don't know. Sometimes we don't know a little bit too much about his, uh, why his uh, past wives and their relationships. Yeah, that that. Uh, oh gosh, they, they get into that. Yeah. It's not his fault though. They just come out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah, the the, the, the say, Tammies are. Uh interesting <laughs> let's say tammy 2 is the one that's around the most right mm-hmm. yeah T- yeah T- she, tammy she one is, is the... oh T- T- tammy 2 is the like two yeah tammy yeah. 2 is just tammy 1 is evil tammy 2 is just Crazy. insane <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I, I I do I do like the episode though with um with tammy tammy 1 and uh they're doing the drinking contest and um, Leslie come t- comes in and she's doing it. And all of a sudden Ron's just like, all right, I've had enough and chugs this stuff. There's probably strong, like basically probably rubbing alcohol and just like chugs it and then walks off and is like, doesn't even flinch. He's like, that that's just mm. true Ron, Ron Swanson fashion there. And you see that, that, right, that moment right there is one, one that I actually, like because there's a bunch of them in the show of basically sh- kind, of, kind of showing the subtle nods of like you know these characters that you know that they're while most times these characters don't like to admit it they mean a lot to each other because you know ron, ron only yeah. steps in after leslie you know is about the you know, could could probably kill herself from alcohol poisoning. In all honesty, yeah. Um, but you know, he he steps in then when he you know when Leslie needs him. He's like you know he 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 Ron especially 
you know, he's the one that, you know, you don't really know much about, you don't really talk much about, that kind of stuff, but, you know, you, it shines through there, like, just how much, you know, his co-workers, his friends actually mean to him. Yeah. Well, that's that's one thing that kind of, in my mind, fell off when we came into Season 7, and there's the little bit of a feud going on between Ron and Leslie. I was like, that just doesn't seem... One, like, when they finally explained it all, and, you know, Leslie ended up standing up Ron for, for lunch when he was going to ask her for a job and all, it's like, one, that doesn't seem like, like Leslie. It doesn't seem like she would be the type to forget that, one. And two, like, I don't know, they, they're, the way that they had, they had been working together for, I mean, how many years at that point? Y'all know better than I do, but, uh, how many years? It, I don't know off the top of my head, but it has been it had been a while, yeah. It'd been it'd been a long time that they'd been working together. They had built that relationship, and it's like, and it just kind of burned out. Like, it doesn't really make much sense. Sure, you can bring it in as a plot point, and that's what they did. But I didn't really. It didn't seem like it flowed well. Like that little bit of it. Like it 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 was like no, they're they're like they probably had the strongest bond of any of the characters in that show. And you're gonna say that they they broke it off off of something some little misunderstanding, you know? And, well, I mean, like, you're I'm... talking about their bond, like, uh, you know, Ron walks Leslie down the aisle at, the, at her wedding, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but uh, that's when in season seven, I love that episode with the, recon- with their reconciliation, but yeah, yeah that was a good are, one. I, I, I do kind of agree with you that the, the whole feud to begin with just kind of seemed a little off. Yeah. Well, I, but... I will say, I, I don't know if I, if I care as much you mentioned in the episode about them reconciling. I don't know if I care as much about it not fitting the story. If I get to see Ron in, uh, what was he wearing? It was like some, uh, like, was it neon something or another? I don't know. He was wearing something crazy. Spandex. <laughs> the spandex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was wearing something crazy. And, uh, so that was a sight to see in that. We wouldn't have seen that. Otherwise. The saxophone. So. Oh, let's talk about it. that too. Duke Silver. <laughs> Duke's oh. over. I'm in love. Ron's uh, alter ego. Yeah, that uh, so yeah, that's something like like that was a uh, um one kind of plot point in the story that took. It almost kind of felt like it had a long term payoff because like you you, you get that mm-hmm. in like season two or three. Yeah. Where you know where, where the audience finds out about Duke Silver. And then, you know, the whole thing at the end with, or in season six with the, um, the Unity concert. Yeah. The, uh. That Unity, like I, like I was saying earlier with the fact that I felt like season six should have been the finale. That Unity concert, that really, that was a, that was a good episode. Yeah, that was a really good episode. Like, yeah, it, it, it was really well done and kind of felt like it should have been closed. Like, I, obviously I know that there were certain things that were kind of left open-ended there, but you know, we, we jumped back over to the comparisons with the office. Like there were a bunch of things left kind of open at the end of the office too, but it's just kind of keeps you in your mind playing out the stories yourself, you know, and it, it doesn't close it and, you know, make it like a, finalize things it's like you can you can pretend this character does this and this character does this make your own kind of a happy ending you know off of it all and it's so like life too not to be deep but sometimes people yeah people go separate ways and you don't know what happened to them so it just yeah feeling that you get in life Mm -hmm. you know enjoying people while you have the stuff so yeah we always love the quote that Andy gives at the end of the office. It's like, how can you know you're in the good old, or how do you know you're in the, wish, I wish you knew you were in the good old days before you left them or something like that. I butchered the line. Anyways, we all know what I'm talking about. But it's a really good line. It's like, you know, you you you, uh, you, you live life and you're always wishing that you're, you know, at some other point than where you're at right now. And... I don't know, sometimes maybe shows can kind of make us realize, hey, 
some, some everything comes to an end at some point, you know. It's like, yeah, we can go back and watch this, but it'll never be new again, you know. Same with life. So we need to get off this deep. We're not we're not a deep philosophical <laughs> podcast. We need to start cracking jokes. Maggie, tell us a dad joke. What is the seagull fly over the sea? I don't know. Because it flew over the bay. It'd be called a bagel. <laughs> She's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are we sure that so that, got, that Maggie's not the dad here? So we got Maggie's uh, dad jokes and Wesley's dry humor. I like it. <laughs> it's a good combo. Thank you. Let me uh, wet my whistle. It won't be so dry. I got it. I got. Never mind. Yeah, let's just move on from that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> David, I don't know. I don't know if you're just taking it the wrong way, or if you're just like not that bright. But I feel like you're not that bright. Let's talk about Entertainment Seven Twenty. Amazing idea, David. That's what we're doing. We're going to spend our next million dollars on that. I love Hold the up, idea, what? and I love John Ralphio. That hair, though. <laughs> I want it. I'm trying right now, but my afro is just not growing. <laughs> Let's be honest, John Ralph and his sister, so funny. Yes, hilarious. Oh. I, I love the way that they ended that with, when uh, when they cut to the end and all, and they showed the tombstone. I was like, oh no, did John Ralph die? And then, then they showed it, it was like, you know, for insurance scam, and I was like, that is 100% something he would do. That's ending. Honestly, that. Yes, yes. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to bring that up. Oh, but uh, talking about that and bringing back to like the Unity costume and stuff too. Mouse Rat songs, like there, there's several of them throughout the um, series, but you know you get you get the the at the end of season one you get the pit, which yeah you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that right Sing there. it, Maggie. <laughs> we all fell in. <laughs> also, I just want to say this is what we play on family vacations, guys. I was about to say, uh, for, for those of you who are li- listening, um, uh, what was it, a year, two years ago or something like that, we went down, all as a family went down to Florida, and we were just sitting around the pool. All the, all the other families were looking at us like we're crazy. We're singing, uh, you know, the that song. We're singing, like, some Phineas and Ferb songs, and, you know, we're singing uh, the Bye Bye Little Sebastian, a, a thousand, a ten thousand bye candles or whatever. Bye Bye Little Sebastian. It's, it's. It was, it was a good no, that, time, but everyone thought we were insane. And the thing is, too, if you go to Spotify and go to the, like the, there's a Mouse Rat account on Spotify. There's a mm-hmm. song called uh, what is it? what is the actual name of the song? I don't know. You should should have come prepared, David. How dare you? Come on, David. Look Maggie, Maggie's looking at you like you're crazy, and you are. You're well, better than us, am, David. But... No, he's not. I yeah, shouldn't it's called, expect too much out of him. But it's it's called uh, Two Birds Holding Hands." If you have not this this song was not in the show. If you haven't heard it, go get on Spotify and, and look it up. But it this song was not in the and show. And if I don't you know do that, what, look us up. Yeah, yeah look us up on Spotify too. Up. Yeah, but uh, no, crazy. You, on, <laughs> who'd have thunk? But yeah, on Spotify, if you look this up, this that song is just so Andy. It's it's, and I think I think I um when we went down to Florida that one time, that's when I actually found that on Spotify. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's a um really good song. I I need to look into what the where that song actually came from. Like, I don't know if it was from a cut episode or something. I don't know. Do you remember when he uh wrote the song for April called November? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I remember that. I, we have to, we oh. have to, uh, y'all, y'all are going to have to remember all the facts about the show because I have only seen the whole thing once. I've seen like the first three seasons, maybe like five times because I tried to watch the show that many times. But, uh, anyways. You're not convincing all the people out there in the webosphere that it's a good show. It is a really good show. I will say that when I go back. It. Well, when- it's, a, it's a good show, but watch The Office first. 
But I go back and do my first. When I do my rewatching, yeah. I start at the second to last episode of season two. That's where I start rewatching it. Hmm. David, it's okay to be wrong. For those out in the webosphere, I'm, I start I'm there. Glad, I'm glad you know Wesley. Because that's when Ben and Chris come. Second to last episode is like that's like it changes. I don't know. I mean, oh, I might be wrong, Chris. and I have a bad memory, but I'm pretty sure David. I said it's okay for you to be wrong. So just because I, I know that doesn't mean it changes the fact that you're wrong. Yeah, Anyways, we, we, we know you're wrong. wrong. I feel like you had something to say. But, okay, but no, cool. Chris, you mentioned Chris. Chris is. <laughs> Chris Traeger, Leslie Nope, <laughs> April Lugate. Like, you, you talk about like the characters with energy. Chris brings so much energy to that show, and I love yes. the um, I love the I think it's the f- the flu season episode when uh, Chris when is in the dead. hospital. You know, I saw, I saw, I saw, one grain of sand, all out. But I, I mentioned the um, the. You know, a- Andy's one-liners, but uh, I think Chris might have the best one-liner from the entire show. Stop pooping. <laughs> oh, He's just looking at himself in the mirror and just. Oh, and I think it's funny because you know he he's just got the flu, but he's acting like he's about to die. Well, David, his body is so finely tuned; even a <laughs> tiny little piece of sand will kill it. Exactly. <laughs> we can't all uh, sit on the th- on the couch and eat potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> that's not how that's supposed to go. Anyways, not not any word, um, like particular like, way of preparing the potatoes. Just potatoes, like <laughs> no, just just whole potatoes. Just sitting on the couch eating whole potatoes. <laughs> Don't you do that on on your? That's what Bubba you know, does. Tuesday after Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, Bubba, right? Yeah. Come on, gosh. Don't you do that to get well, in the character? Like, well, it's like, there are multiple ways to cook tighter. But, we'll can't beat your stuff. Pulling them out of the ground, eating them raw. Mm-mm. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Yeah. Now, I don't I don't want to be stealing the lines here. You know, speaking of, speaking of taters, um... I actually have a bowl of mashed taters sitting right in front of me for no particular reason. It was just we had some. But that wasn't why I said that earlier. I just thought I'd reference that. It's my uh, snack. I guess it's a snack. It might be my dinner, too. I don't know. Sometimes. Yep, yep. Very fun. I do want to... To get us back onto the, uh, the Parks and Rec... Um, let's talk about, uh, the campaign, campaign, uh, from, uh, between Leslie and whatever his name, uh, face, his name is, um, and now I can't even remember the actor's name, uh, Ant-Man, who plays Ant-Man? Oh, uh, uh, Paul Rudd, um, Paul Rudd, what? Paul Rudd, wait, what's his name? He's, uh, what, okay, why am I blanking on this now? Maggie, help us out. <laughs> no, my brain's blanking. <laughs> Wesley, it's contagious. Dang How dare you? It's contagious. <laughs> it's my my the mind. People. I mean this. Yeah. People. The. The only name that's coming in mind is Ben, but Ben is not it right. It's um. What's the name of the the candy? They're in the whole the whole thing. Yeah. Sweetums is the candy, but who's the name of the um? Who own it? Yeah. Uh, Bobby Newport. Bobby Newport. Newport. Bobby yeah. Newport. I forgot yeah. that he was in Parks and Rec Newport. when we were watching through it. And I saw, you know how, like, when you watch through the on a streaming service, they show, like, just a, a freeze frame from the episode. And I mm-hmm. saw that he was in it. And I was like, wait a minute. I don't... Because I had watched that far before. And I was like... Why is he in Parks and Rec? I don't remember that. And we started watching and I forgot, like, yeah, he's he's 100% in Parks and Rec. And, well, he's an idiot. 
I love the I love the uh, episode where they're doing the campaign video and they're all just sitting around being like Bobby Newport because they're trying to do the voice correctly. They just keep saying it. Bobby and- Newport. Bobby Newport. Bobby Newport. Bobby. Bobby Newport. Bobby Newport. <laughs> just like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also love how, like, like how out of it he was running. Like, what was it? Um, uh, in in the in the last season when they were trying to find a mayor, they bring him in, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's like, what weren't we running for?" You know, and he's like, he couldn't remember what they, he was running for. And it's like he probably didn't even know what he and he didn't know what he was running for when he was actually running for, you know, city council. He was just doing it because, you know. He literally told everyone Reasons. to vote. So, yeah, he was like, "I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you can't vote for yourself." He's like, "I voted for you." She's like, "What?" He's like, "You can't vote for yourself." Pretty sure that's illegal. <laughs> yeah, Sweden is enough- definitely a very interesting co- co- company, mm-hmm. and a very interesting mm-hmm. family. Yep. Oh my goodness, remember when they uh, wanted to put sugar in the water supply? Yeah. <laughs> well, why not? I mean, it would taste so much better. What is it, uh, like water zero or whatever they were trying to call it? <laughs> yeah. I think so, yeah, something like that. What was the name? What's the name of the fast food restaurant? Ponch um, Burger. Ponch Burger. Yeah. And actually, if you... If uh, you uh, Remember a couple of videos back on the Down the Rabbit Shell channel? We did the like commercial that kept changing. I was wondering mm-hmm. that yeah. f- the fast food bit I did in that was basically a punch burger thing. Okay, yeah. Well, you you know in the Johnny Karate episode that they do, yeah, and they do all the commercials. First off, me and Sarah watching through that, we're having a hard time distinguishing between the commercials and. The fake commercials, <laughs> but after a couple <laughs> minutes of watching it, we were like, "Oh yeah, that's that has too many diabetes in it for it to be real." Um, but uh, but I, we watched we watched the Ponch Burgers uh, uh commercial. And I was like, "That sounds so much like David's the Beef Shack," and I was like, "That has to be his inspiration for it." Yeah, it, it was, it was. Um, I think I've, I think I did it from we, a couple we calling other you out, David. things I've seen, but no, it, it was, it was, but uh, um. Just because, just like, yeah, every, like every time I think of, like, a, like, you know, greasy fast food company or something, I think of Posh Burger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, also, that one uh, <laughs> bit in that when they're talking about, the like, reducing the soda or doing the soda tax or whatever, you know, the, um, the child-sized drink, you know, it's roughly the same size yeah, as a two-year-old like, child. <laughs> child, dude. <laughs> Literally a child size. <laughs> uh, only in Pawnee. And then Anne, you know, she brings the thing of like the um, you know, how much sugar would be in one of those. She got the help the tub, and then uh, <laughs> Leslie's uh, the- Le- Leslie's eating it, and she's like, "What'd you do to the sugar? It tastes amazing." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as, as much as she's trying to fight against it, she can't help that it's just delicious. <laughs> now, another thing we need to talk about. Jeremy Jam. Oof. Oh, gosh. Back so multiple times. You just got jammed. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's what she oh. said. It's Wrong the fact show. that he ends <laughs> Got me. He is a very interesting character, to say the least. Yeah. Everything that you can find annoying, he's got it. Mm-hmm. But and it doesn't help that he's a dentist. But then he just tries to be best friends, and he thinks him and Leslie are best friends after he's been so rude. She's so funny. 
Yeah, he always he always brings in very interesting plot points to uh, the episodes that he's in. I mean, it's always pretty much the same where, you know, Leslie has to convince him to agree with her. But then, you know, there's usually, like, strings attached or you have to do something to do it. But, like, I don't know. It, it, he's, he's an interesting slash funny character when he's not just completely annoying. Yeah. Like, he's he's so stupid that it's, like... You know, like his catchphrase, you got jammed. Like, what does that mean? It means nothing. He just says it. <laughs> He's trying to turn his last name Who's... into a pun? No, I guess. Not well, a pun. No, not a... I don't know. A saying? I don't know. <laughs> He's I trying guess. to coin it, coin his own last name? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's that other councilman? He's the... um. Like, uh, it looks more like he's, like, the head councilman. He's the only one on there that's not, like, insane. It's not, um, Jam. It's not, not Dex- Dexter. It's not Dexter. No, it's, uh, oh, it's the other guy. Um. Oh. I, I don't um... know what he's... Y- y'all know who I'm talking about, though, right? You know about yeah, the you do. regular one. Yeah. He seems like he's probably the only regular person in Pawnee. <laughs> And I wonder why he's there. Is he, is he on city council? Because he's trying to make... <laughs> he's like, oh, this town is just so bad. We gotta... Oh, gotta and do, that's another thing, too. A, lo- a lot of shows that have, like, a bunch of extras in it... Also, like, you know, Parks and Rec's got a bunch of extras throughout the show. But... Yeah. Pa- or Parks and Rec is one of those shows where all the extras are just as crazy and insane as the main cast. Like... <laughs> I'm purred happily. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> oh, purred happily. Purred is... This sentence will end when I finish it. You heard with purred. <laughs> uh, a purred vert. <laughs> and that's what's... Yeah, it's really interesting. And also what I love is that the extras stay around from the beginning of the series to the end. Like, there's so many mm-hmm. small, minute characters that just are there. And it's also really interesting when she's running for city council and she's running against all these people who are extras and who have like small mm-hmm. minor characters and they're all just running for city council against her. Yeah. They have they have that and then like in the um in the town count uh town town council, yeah, me- those meetings that they have or the um the forums, that's what I'm looking for. The forums, they have, you know, recurring characters that you know always speak up and say things and like yeah like you said they're in the whole entire series and kind of you know are their own they have their own personalities that you see develop throughout the show one of my favorite yeah. one of my favorite bits with an extra is that one when uh when it's, it's after chris becomes city manager I and mean, he's trying to make a bunch of changes in the parks department and he gets ron that like uh swivel desk thing their circular swirl desk, and you remember the, the lady that mm-hmm. comes in talking about uh, you know, there, there's an infection in one of the water things at the pool, or there's a, a bacteria in one of, the, in one of the water things at the pool because she, uh, got an infection from drinking from making sun tea out of it, even though it says not to drink the water. <laughs> well, that's obviously not her fault. I'm 100 percent on her side. But I love Ron's just uh, you know. Uh, while she's talking, just slowly start turning. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Starts running around the table. <laughs> but my office. That's like, yeah. They put us in the. I'm just like in the middle of a college campus with an office, so I'm available to students at any time. <clears throat> that must be fun. <laughs> so I need a swivel desk. I need a I need a circular desk so so they can chase you around it. Hey, they can get their uh, steps in that way because they don't know how you do it. You know, walking around all the campus. Funny. <laughs> or better yet, just get a chair with a motor that automatically spins you around. There you go. I can talk to multiple people at once. I, I should probably leave this for uh, for a actual Star Wars episode because we're talking about spinning chairs, Dave. Did you hear that? Um, when uh, in episode six, when they do the spin uh, on the Death Star, when um, Palpatine's <clears throat> spinning, that the motor that they had 
uh for the chair actually like it wasn't working so um underneath underneath the skirt and the robes that he's wearing uh he's pushing his feet around because because it wouldn't stop so uh it's like you know whenever, whenever you think about that scene you can just think you know he has he's shuffling his feet to to spin in the chair you, you, you like you like fun. uh you like bringing up this this kind of stuff about movies don't you because like uh last last week you brought up the fact that uh you know in, in uh, last crusade when in when uh yeah indiana jones and his dad were on the blimp they're not wearing they're not wearing pants in one of those or not wearing pants in one of those scenes <laughs> well well see the thing is it's like those are like some weird behind the scenes maggie looks confused because she hasn't seen this last episode apparently i don't know uh but anyway yesterday uh, come on i don't care i don't know what day it is <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, like they're, so, like, they're, they're, like when I hear them, it's like, oh, these are cool little behind the scenes Easter egg things that people don't know. That's what we're here for, David. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be informing people. Well, I better watch some, listen to the one from yesterday because I don't understand why someone's not wearing pants. Well, it was really hot. I... Not them taking their pants off, <laughs> but they took their pants off because it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> David, I am slowly taking our show away from the kids. <laughs> I'm gonna do it one day. When you post on uh when you post on YouTube, make sure you put this is not the this is not for kids. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh yeah. my gosh. That's uh I try, I try my best. I really do. I have like five filters. Yeah, and two of them aren't working. Probably about so three. Let's, let's, let's bring it back and talk about the man, the myth, the legend. I'm just kidding. Larry, Gary, Jerry. I uh, believe I say <laughs> Lockhart. Uh, no. I'm supposed to keep it clean. We can't talk about him. <clears throat> How did Gary get Gale? <laughs> no. You're just like Ben. <laughs> what well, you know, it's... women like people for their hearts. So a lot sometimes. Okay, okay. But how did Larry get whatever his name is? Larry, Jerry, Terry, Barry. His, his, his real names name's Gary. His real name is Gary. Oh, Gary Gary. Gary. then they call they him call Larry, him... right? No, they call, they call him, him Jerry. Jerry. Then, when he tries to correct him in like season, it's either season six or seven, uh, April can, uh, calls him Terry. And then when he's working, I thought for Terry the, was something that I think Terry was when he was working with Leslie at uh, the the national whatever thing. No, no, you're, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but yeah, he's Larry. had four names. Le- yeah, Larry and Terry was one with, with the National Park Service. I was half expecting them to uh, give him a new name when he was uh, uh, the intern, in, uh, the mayor for that little bit of time. I half expected them to give him a new name, uh, like someone just accidentally said the wrong thing, and then it, you know everyone just went with it. What, like <laughs> Again, Barry Gurgich? Like, Barry Gurgich or something? <laughs> maybe. Something like that. That's also another thing. There are so many names that rhyme with, like, Jerry or Larry or Gary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it? The episode with uh, Leslie's hearing was the first one they found out that he was uh, actually Gary. And they're like, they're like, Gary. No, I just can't. I can't. I can't say that. <laughs> you're, you're Jerry now. <laughs> that was funny. But uh, He could have been called Harry. There you go. We got Harry. See. They they have a really really uh like w- the family. Whenever you see their family, it's like oh look at that they're real close and sweet yada yada yada. But like he's always the bud of every single joke. So it's like, do you feel bad for him or do you just laugh? Also, the inexplicable you- thing of like, did you just say he's the bud of every joke? Probably. Proceed. But also the inexplicable thing of like you know when he's at work he's a klutz he's you know he's he's yeah. uh, tripping over himself all the time and then 
when he's a, when in that one episode when uh, Leslie ends up going to his house for some reason, you know he he's like, you know, catching stuff that she drops and stuff like that. He's he's like, you know, somehow. Like, where, where did this come from? Yeah. Uh, uh Maggie on 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 uh, our our uh, English side of things, the the second tagline of this show, like we've said, is we don't English too well. Uh, I, I know I've mentioned it before, but um, uh, there was one episode. We were talking about the, um, I think it was the Chat GPT one that we did. Oh yeah. Where we're talking about the Wright brothers. Yeah, and and, and like, there was there's a comment that called out the fact that I got thrown off by a loft, and like, I watched it and I thought I was stupid myself. I don't I don't always have my mind all here when I'm uh when I'm recording. I mean, you know, long long days so. Oh, That's not an excuse. I wouldn't have a mind. I wouldn't. My mind wouldn't be here anyways. But laughed a lot in that episode. Ah, good, good. As long as long as you can get some laughs out of it, as long as people can get laughs out of our uh, lack of knowledge in the English language, that is our first and uh, best language, supposedly. This is completely off the rabbit trail, but there are so many things sometimes I want to say when you guys when I'm listening to you, and in that one. Did you guys know that, um, I forgot the name of the show. My brain's not working. Apparently she doesn't know either. <laughs> oh, in South Park, they did uh, a they episode on ChatGBT and ChatGBT wrote the episode. I think I heard something oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. It was a 10 out of 10 recommend. Hmm. I could never get into South Park. I don't know. Like I watch clips here and there of it and I find it somewhat funny. But I don't know. Like I don't. I don't really care for the animation style. But I didn't really care for like <clears throat> how they went about telling the story either. When I did watch, the problem is that some of it's really funny and some of it's mm-hmm. just because I'm not really into like fart jokes, that yeah. kind of stuff. Me, but um, when they make fun of society, it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. And yeah. especially the recent episodes are funny to watch because they're all very based on what's happening right now. Yeah. Well, so that's, I will that's say. The thing. I do watch a lot of clips from like South Park, like Family Guy, and like I watch Family Guy, but like I watch more clips from that. Some from The Simpsons, like so. I, I'll see the I'll see the highlights, and that's kind of I'm like, okay, I don't need to watch the show. These are the funny. The parts. worldwide privacy tour episodes. You should watch that. Hmm. The thing I like about I South Park will. though is because the thing I like about South Park though is because they uh. It's a very, it's very simple animation, but they use they they use one of the like best like best in the industry uh, softwares for animating. Like they use the, um, I think one one thing that a lot of people, I think this, this software that they use for South Park is the same software they used in Frozen to get the accurate snowflake uh, stuff. So oh, they, wow. you know, it's like one of the best animation softwares that exists. And they use it for South Park, but that's how they can make an episode in like two days. And that's how yeah. they can make episodes that that actually do address current events. Because you know, like most shows, you don't want to you don't want to make make an episode where you mention memes or current events or whatever. Because by the time the episode airs, it'll be outdated. But mm-hmm. yeah, with South, with South Park, it, they they make episodes so quickly that they, that's how they're able to do that. Fine. It's one of those that it gets funnier the more you watch it because once you get the characters and you get the patterns of the characters, for some reason the repetition of like mm-hmm. character is funny. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll add it to the list of shows that I have to watch, but the list is extremely long right now. I haven't finished it, but no. um, it it is funny. I've watched, I don't know. Because I've watched like the recent episodes and then I've started from the beginning, and I'm mm-hmm. not super. It's really long, so I'm not wow. super. Uh, how many seasons I have? Mm-hmm. A lot. A lot. Okay. They get, yeah. At the end, like the the more recent ones, they don't they don't do it for very long anymore. They're like mm-hmm. really. That, that's one thing that I like that I like about a uh, um like my probably my favorite one of those like comedies. Or uh, animated comedies is Futurama. That's one thing I, I, I like mm-hmm. about Futurama too is it's it's over. 
I don't know. That's, that kind of seems, seems kind of weird, but the fact that like it's, you know, it had its prime. It has down some of some down moments, but it's not The Simpsons, where it's just good going. lord. The Simpsons has gone on for way too long. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like that with the uh, Family Guy because I I never really could get too much into The Simpsons. I think I watched maybe two seasons of it, and I was just like, eh, whatever. And, you know, having how many there were. I, I've gotten through a lot more Family Guy, but there's like 21 seasons right now. And I'm in like maybe eight. It's like mm. I'm maybe halfway there, but it's still a long way to go. It's it's my background show. I watch it when I have nothing else to watch. So it's a, it's a slow going thing, but. Don't really care too much if I watch it through. <clears throat> All right, David. How long has this Parks and Rec conversation been going? Uh, we're an hour and six minutes and fifteen seconds. Um, so we should. Ah, probably... Thanks for the precision. You ready for what's I do want to. I do want to. Um, well, we can do that in a, in a minute. But I do want to uh, mention something okay. else on the Parks par- or bring it back to Parks and Rec for a moment. But uh. Okay. We we mentioned the you know the um uh ten thousand candles in the wind earlier, and you mentioned uh like we mentioned Ben being so confused about a uh, um how uh, Jerry and Gail you know are together, but I love the fact of like how like how uh confused Ben is with little Sebastian, like he just doesn't understand. It's a mini horse. What, what's the big deal? He just doesn't get it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's that's... like, he's like, I, I get it. Don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. So funny. Yeah. But really, it's a mini horse. I mean, yeah, but like, on. like Ron, like Ron I'm talking about Sebastian. Uh, yeah. But like Ron talking about like. I have only cried two times in my life. Once, when I was like, I think he said he was like five or something. He got hit by a bus, and then this morning, when I heard that little Sebastian had passed. <laughs> both, both. Uh, he could have sucked it up a little bit with getting hit by a bus. And he, come on, it's just a bus. But little Sebastian, a hundred percent, is worth some tears. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, the, the we could probably talk for like I don't know. We, we could probably do another ten episodes on Parks and Rec and not cover everything. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, we we have to dive in depth a lot more. But uh, as a, as a broad yeah. overview, I feel like this wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, you know, after we after we finish doing the Star Wars stuff, maybe we should do a TV show and do seasons. Something to consider. We could do that. I'm not, I'm my, not my, uh, correct, but... uh, my, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what I'm promoting? What's the word? What would be the word I'm looking for here? My candidate? Recommendation? I don't know. For, for a show? A recommendation sounds the best in this in this uh, sentence, but my recommendation would be to do community season by season. Yes, that, that, be... that's a good idea. Well, you wouldn't have too much for the first. After that, you'd just be got a lot to talk about. Crazy. All right. Let let, let yeah. us know if you want to hear, if you want to hear us talk about that. That won't be until after Star after one of Star Wars. That'll be. It, it won't be till year. like. February, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. January, February. But uh, um, I think. Hey, let us know. So, I was say yeah, just just continue to let us know what if, if whoever is listening and wants to or listens in the future or whenever at any point in time, let us know what you want want us to talk about. Like, you know, we're open to suggestions. We're trying to stay with, you know, what's current, but we also have our own shows that we like. So, you know, and tell us what you like. Why is it you want to hear about Harry Potter? Well, that's the right answer, guys, out there. Let them know they need to like become 
know everything about Harry Potter and do stuff about it. I was thinking about that, that we do need to cover <laughs> Harry Potter at some point. I think Maggie's also trying to get herself back on the show, because... Uh... She, she's, yeah, the, she's, the Harry, does. she's the Harry Potter expert that we know, so. If if this bombs, then I don't know. But if it does amazing, then we gotta, like, hire her or something. For free. Mm. I, I was about to say, you, you, you uh, giving away the money we don't have? <laughs> I'm giving away your money. My money? Mm. Yeah, I mean, you're rolling in the dough, so, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, do you want to head to a What's New With You segment? Yeah, we can go and do that. <clears throat> okay. What's new? What's new with you? What's new? What's new with you? What's new? What's new with you? Yeah! So, Wesley, we're no, going to do What's Maggie. New With You. We're, yeah, I was about to say, we're going to do What's New With You a little bit differently this time. Maggie, say, tell us about yourself. What's New With Me. Wait, tell, 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 tell us about yourself. Tell, tell us everything. Your entire life story. Every little tiny detail. You know about what I'm watching? You want to know about everything I'm doing in my life? Every yep, single everything. thing. Okay. Well, I moved. Cool. I moved and then started a job the next day after I moved. So that's really fun. And so my I entire life. same thing. That's fun. Yeah, isn't it? And so my entire life is work right now. But I love my job. So it's cool. So I don't mind. Came up with the whole plan for a program today. 16 pages long that I wrote. Nice. <clears throat> well, as long as as long as you can uh, love your job more than you love coming down and seeing us. Well, I know. That was depressing. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. Cousins Weekend had to miss it because I started my new job the week of. So that was very sad. So, yeah. I'm still mourning it. It's, it's yeah, one of those things thing, uh, where l- l- we're trying to make the... it a... Oh, never mind. David's talking. <laughs> Especially that's one thing. Last week in What's New With You, uh, Wes and I mentioned the Cousins Weekend, but uh, somebody wasn't there. Yeah. Well, it's, it is one thing. It's like we try to make it like a weekend and like make it more easy for people to come down like you and like, you know, and everyone's living in North Carolina. It makes it easier for y'all to come down for a longer period of time. But when you go off and get a new job all willy-nilly, I mean, you know, we can only do so much. We planned it like a year in advance, so. And I was available when you planned it. Yep, you should have stayed available. You know what? Now we just have to kick you out. Oh, man. Not part of the Cousins Club anymore. No, no. Revoke her uh, cousin's ship. Yep, yep, exactly. You heard it here first. Maggie has been revoked. Well, I don't, I don't know what that means, but you know, it it it's what happened. Wait, wait she has been revoked, later. or her cousinship has been revoked? No, she has been revoked. Oh, well, not entirely okay, sure what that entails, but Did you hear about the show? Thing? What are you watching? I'm watching Ted Lasso, which is super funny. The third season just came out, and I was very excited. I've been watching it with my mom, so I still have the last episode left to watch. But this season is so funny. Well, every season's so funny, but the season has been really good. And they really fleshed out some characters, and some different characters have done some bonding. It's been good. It's been really fun. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of or thought about one. I don't know if I've heard of that one. Let me look it up real quick so I can get an idea. I might have seen ads for it or something. Okay, what did you so, say it was called? I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you like the first the first episode you know like the premise um so it's a show on apple tv oh, okay it's honestly probably the show on apple tv there are other shows but like it's 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 the show it's amazing it's a, and it's about this um football football um club in england soccer who hires this american American football coach to come and to coach their players. Um, and it's very interesting. So basically the, the owner of this football club is hiring him because she wants it to see, but he in his charming personality, but also knows nothing about 
English football slash soccer, um, has no idea anything about it. But he mm. and his happy demeanor and personality comes in and, you know, doesn't do so terrible. So, but it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's, uh, Speaking of um, soccer and having a coach that doesn't really know what they're doing, um, Sarah, and for those of you who don't know, Sarah's my wife, um, Sarah had a coach in high school at one point that had, like, never coached any soccer, didn't really know much about soccer, and, like, I think he was, like, maybe, like, an army man or whatever, like, he was in the military, so he, you know, was, like, real, real, like, they ran real hard, they were, like, really, really good shape, but, like, you know... He had to really start learning how to actually do, like, yeah, soccer, for as, as easy as it looks like it is on the field, you bring in someone who doesn't know what they're doing, <laughs> like, it can show, oh, and football and football yeah, are two different definitely. sports. So. You got you got soccer players out there tackling each other, and you're, you know, they're, they're all babies over there, and, uh, okay, I'll stop. It's funny because it has, like, a lot of English humor. So, uh-huh. as in, not English, like, jokes that we wouldn't understand. More like, it's funny because they're just a bunch of, ang- like, angry, really into soccer Englishmen. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's just, yeah. you know, a lot of, like, Eng- English aggression that's mm-hmm. really, that, like, people have at him for the way he's doing the team and things like that. And it's just funny. So, I- well. I would I would add it to the list, but you said it was on Apple TV, and I do not plan on getting that. I I get Apple TV every time the new season comes out of this, and then I just get rid of it, like in less mm. than a month, then I watch it and then cut it. Yeah, but it's all it's it, all. So. I don't necessarily want one form of media that like controls it all, because then they can just jack up prices, and you know you have to pay for it if you want stuff. But it's like sometimes it's just so inconvenient that you have to have like 50 different services to watch, you know, a show because, you know, there's some have them, some don't. And, you know, it, it does make it a little difficult, but it hey, is what it is. You know how much I love sitcoms and, you know, all sitcoms are like, I will say Ted Lasso is one of the funniest TV shows I have ever seen. And it's it's up there. One of the best. Hmm. You know, it's yeah. kind of Maybe a weird thing that, uh, it's kind of a weird thing you reminded me of this, but, uh, you said you're talking about, like, the, um, like, English aggression or whatever, like, in, in soccer. That reminded me of, uh, it, the real life, uh, New Zealand rugby team. I don't know if you, either one of y'all has ever seen this, but, you know, rugby is, like, the closest, like, international thing to, like, American football. Mm-hmm. But the, the New Zealand rugby team, you know, uh, um, so, you know, New Zealand, the native New Zealand people were the Maori, and they, they were, like, if you don't really know much about the Maori, look, look them up, they're, they're really cool. But the um, New Zealand rugby team does a, like, before they go, or before they play a game, the, all, all, the entire team goes out on the field, faces the other team, and does a Maori war dance. Oh yeah, I've seen it that is like if I, if I was on a team getting ready to play rugby with the, with those guys, I'd be like that. That's that's pretty uh, terrifying, honestly. It's very intimidating. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, like rugby players are some big people. Like, yeah, they're they're yeah. you don't want to mess with well, them because rugby is is a much more physical sport than even American football because it's you know like. You're you're basically in a dog pile for most most of the time the ball is in play. Like it's a I was say, much for like, more. It's it's not completely, but like imagine, you know, American football with like probably for the the size that I've seen most rugby players at. You got like linemen basically and no pads on and they're jacked, <laughs> running full speed at each other. Whoever has the ball. <laughs> You know, like injuries in that, that sport are no joke. Crazy. And like I said, if you like, uh, like I said, with the Maori people too, like not not everyone on the New Zealand team is like uh, 
Ma- you know, has Maori heritage, but a lot of them do. But uh, think about in uh, The Mandalorian, when you see uh, Boba Fett uh, killing the stormtroopers. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Tamora Morrison is, or is at least partially Ma- uh, Maori descent. And that, that, those facial expressions and, the, and that, uh, like, just violence, that, that's, that's what you, that's pretty much what you're looking at when you're, you know, facing down with, against the, um, New Zealand rugby team, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like they probably do, they probably do just about anything but break the law. They'll probably break you, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. R- r- rugby yeah. and hockey are two of those sports that are, like, you, you, you mm-hmm. think of like American football as being a uh, rough contact sport. Rugby and hockey are gotten soft. Up. Yeah, rugby and hockey are up there too. That's the thing that I don't like about most most sports nowadays is the fact that it's gotten so soft. Like you can't do anything without. Like, I understand it. Yeah, it's supposed to be for the the safety of the players and all. And you know, there there is that aspect of it. But you know. Still, you don't time, need you, to have you, you get that. Into some of these you get into some of these sports knowing that there is a risk involved. Yeah, but, I mean exactly, you know. So it is what it is. It's not going to change, and you know we got to accept it as as is. But it does suck that like specifically like I know you don't watch a whole lot of basketball, but like I I, I watch and keep up with a decent amount of basketball, and that has gotten extremely soft. Football, not as much, but, like, they have gotten a little... Like, okay, I understand, like, targeting stuff, like, targeting rules. Yeah, I, I agree that those probably need to be implemented. But, you know, uh, like, basketball, you can barely touch someone without, you know, having having a foul or something. And it's just mm. stupid. Also, one thing I just thought of when I mentioned uh, Boba Fett earlier. So, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about Attack of the Clones... I mentioned that Boba Fett was in four movies, and you you had corrected me and said that he was in three, which you're not technically wrong, but I realize Boba Fett is in. He's in the Christmas the, special. No, not the Christmas special. He's in. I mean, he is, but that's not what I'm talking about. He's in A New Hope in the special edition when they re-added that scene with Jabba uh, the Hutt. Yeah, he's in the background. Well, so wasn't he, he originally in, in? He was originally in it. Was wasn't he in like the original release? And then they edited. Because I don't know. I I know I know what you're talking about. I've seen that before. Yeah. So so technically he, he is in four movies, but he's only in there the go. background in A New Hope. There you go, David. You you can be right for once. <laughs> he is right. Also, talking about the Christmas special, I'm wondering now if, uh, right now we have, for December, we have that slot, Star Wars slot slated for, uh, Last Jedi, but I'm wondering if we need to actually find the Christmas special and watch it and do a review of that. I would love to find that. I mean, I don't know. I think I did I... look it up a, a while, I did look it up, uh, when I thought of that idea, and I did find the whole thing on YouTube, so hopefully it's still up there so we can watch it. You know, come uh, December. As I say, we well, we probably should just go. I mean, maybe maybe we should watch it, take really really good notes, and then just save it. Yeah. We'll we'll we'll, we'll go ahead and watch it now, and we'll go ahead and shoot that episode in advance, <laughs> so you make sure we have it. Mm-hmm. It's it's worth it, David. It's worth it. I promise. Oh okay. Yeah. Anyways. So, David, I need help. I do you want to put help. that out there. What? I need help. Yeah. Um, I started another game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And no, I haven't what finished any. Well, uh, I started another game, but I'm about finished with it, too, because it's uh, Super Mario Brothers for the DS. You have been beat Super Mario Brothers for the DS? No, I have. I'm playing through it. So, uh, yeah, I uh, it. I started playing it. I started playing it on um, Sunday, uh, and I am 
I think I'm, I'm about I'm about through World Six. I didn't realize how easy it was because obviously last time I played it, I was like maybe eight, and you know it wasn't that easy. <laughs> but now I'm blowing through it pretty quickly. So I don't have, but see, I have I have uh, that game that I'm playing on that, and Sarah might have me start playing Ocarina of Time. Because she has that, and I want to start playing Zelda games. So she might have me play that when I get finished with this. So I have a game on the DS I'm playing. I have two games on the Switch that I'm playing. And I have, like, five games on the Xbox that I'm still playing. <laughs> and I still have to finish Fallout 4. <laughs> By September. I'm going to hold you to this. Yeah, well, I'm really working on it. But you know what? I'm, like, five hours into the game. And it's already, what... Uh, June. Mm-hmm. So, I got July, or the rest of June, July, August, and no, it's not happening, David. <laughs> Should what, make what, it... what? Say what? Prioritize. Prioritize? I would love to prioritize that over anything else, but, uh, we're, uh, busy life, busy life. So, uh, what, what? At what point in time do I need to have finished in September? Like, is it the end of September, or is it, like, smack dab right at the beginning? It's going to be the first uh, first ep- week of uh, September, isn't it? Uh, no, it's the third week. I'll, I'll so we'd that. be recording it in the second. Dang it. My birthday! What, second week of December? Oh, I thought you said September. Yeah, September. Yeah. September's close, man. I know. Mm-hmm. Too close. Twenty twenty three is gonna be over and and all of a sudden it's gonna be twenty twenty seven. I know my work schedule for the rest of the year is insane. I have like barely mm-hmm. any free <clears throat> What's the con uh barely know the concept. You don't need free time. Yeah. No, I'm excited about everything we have to do. It's just we're going to be really busy. Yeah. Fun things. Well, it's good. It's good to like what you do, especially when you have a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Still working on that, but that's what David's for. So. Yeah. Get it together, David. Yeah, David. Come on. Gosh. Make it I go mean, fast. Magic. Yeah. Finger. Be better. Well. I mean, I know I shouldn't expect much, but be better. We are actually almost halfway there to getting, uh, actually over halfway there to getting monetized on uh, Spotify. I know I saw that. I I was I thought that was real cool. Um, also, please. <clears throat> also, uh, with the YouTube channel, we're at like what? Uh, we're over a thousand views on that one on that one video. Um, the watch time is uh irrelevant because it's not good but we did also get a couple subs off of that too so that i thought was was uh mm-hmm. adequate so you know we're, we're we're growing slowly but surely so for those who are listening follow so you can stay up to date on what we're posting and leave a like wherever you can yeah and uh keep listening especially on spotify Oh, yeah. That really helps us out. That's important. <laughs> listening. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yes. But pretty happy with the numbers. We're with how how where we've been or how far we've come so far. Or how Run quick. short a time we've been doing this. That's what I was looking for. And and, and like think about this, like this episode right now that we're recording is gonna be our sixteenth episode. So we're halfway there in just fifteen episodes. Well, yeah. okay, fifteen and that's, episodes. That's I'm, real good. Technically 16 if you count the pilot, but yeah, so. Yeah, which we still need to record a trailer. We do, yes, yes. Um, we do need to I guess we'll get around that. to that eventually. Yeah. Oh, well. David, you're the one person that has not told us what's new with you. Um. Cool, nobody cares. I mean, I'm boring, so yeah. Uh, speaking no, really, of, really, you, I've, just, you... I've just been playing. I've just really just been playing Tears of the Kingdom. 
Yeah, yeah, you, you just do the same thing all the time. See, you always come uh, start off with, uh, you know, hey, Wesley, what's new with you? And you're like, I already know the answer, nothing. And so you know what? I've actually had some stuff the past couple of weeks, and you know what? I got double stuff this week because I've been playing Mario, and I went and saw Into the uh, Spider-Verse or whatever the new Spider-Man um, movie is. Good. Yes, it was it was really good. Uh, do be warned, though, it's a uh, two-parter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I I had heard it beforehand, but I wasn't thinking about it when we were watching it. And so it in, it was like getting close to, I mean, we'd been in there for, you know, an hour and a half, however long the watch, the, the movie is. It felt like two hours. And I was like, this, this needs to start wrapping up soon, doesn't it? And then I, then like it ended and I was, I looked at Sarah and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot this is a two part. I probably should have told you that before we came and saw it, but I'm not entirely sure when the next one's supposed to come out either. I know that there was a big gap between the first and the second one that they just came out with. So I hope it's not that long. But I think the first one was like 2018, 2019, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it's been a good like four ish, five years, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it was, it was really good. Dang. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. What was it? Uh, watching through Parks and Rec, they, they introduced, uh, or they had one of the, the flash forward moments and it was 2023. And I was like, hey, look at that. It's 2023. And they're like, you know, at that point in time, they just think it's so far in the future. And it's like... <sighs> but here we are. Crazy. Here we are. Yep. Alive and still kicking. But uh, yes, it was a good movie. It, most of us. Uh, not all of us, though. I agree. But um, but it was a good movie. I, don't, I guess we're not talking about that on the podcast. Because it's been out, I guess, I think at least a week or so. I think longer than that. But uh, it was a good movie. Would recommend for anyone who's not sure if they want to see it or not. But it might be going to streaming soon, so it may not matter. True. Yeah, I think that's one I'm going to wait for the streaming on. I would say that for The Flash, but we're talking about that next week, so i got to go see it. Uh, We're seeing that next week? We're talking about that next week? Yeah. So make sure to see it next oof. weekend. Or this coming weekend. Uh, oof. Uh, I can figure that out. I can figure that out. But yeah, that's another movie that looks like it's going to be a train wreck. DC, and I'd man. Be... Yeah. I'm okay, I'm, I'm, it, okay. But... I'm excited for what... For the James Gunn DC, when he when when he he starts actually making movies with DC, like he he's talked about um he's he's mentioned like he's he's working on a Superman movie, and he wants it to go back to like the like classic Superman movies, like an actual. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to be an actual good Superman movie. But yeah, they're going to have Superman hanging from some uh, ropes and have him fly across a green screen. But DC right now. Yeah. Maybe they'll have him sit on a table and he'll lay across the table and the table will have like a green screen tarp over it and they can just edit it out and he'll just kind of be slaying back and forth like they did. You know, anyways. Uh. Mm. But, you know, like like, uh, like we talked about last week, like, you know, I think Indiana Jones 5 is going to be a train wreck too, but I'm hope, I hope I'm wrong. But, yeah. And I know yeah. The Flash is going to be a train wreck. But honestly, at this point, I don't even care. <laughs> like, it's, well, uh... I, I don't, I don't know necessarily because, like, look at it this way: for the Indiana Jones franchise, Lucas film has shown that under Disney that they really can't make good movies. You know, the only good one that they've made is Rogue One, and I feel like that was a fluke. Good one. I mean, like, I love the movie, but I don't think that they knew what they were. They got to it somehow. Anyways, but like, as far as Flashpoint goes. Like, DC has made some good movies. It's just, on average, they don't. And that's usually what you see. So, like, yeah, you can look at their track record and be like, well, look at all these bad ones that they made. But it's like, yeah, but they also made Wonder Woman and the Shazam movie was good. And so it's like, they can make a good movie. They just usually don't. Whereas, like, Indiana Jones just seems like, yes, it's going to be a train wreck. So I'm hopeful for Flashpoint, and I'm also hopeful for um, the Blue Beetle movie that comes out later this year. I yep. hope we're not talking about Aquaman 2, because I could care less. I love Jason Momoa, but, I mean, I can watch that at home. 
I think it comes. I think it's slated for December. It's not even the schedule for December. So Good. if we want to talk about, I mean, I, I'll January, probably... if we want to talk about sometime in January, we probably we can we can make that happen. But yeah. it's not. It's yeah. I, we're not talking about it in December. However, okay. but don't forget, no one's watching the Hunger Games prequel till we're all together for Thanksgiving. Oof. That's I don't know happen. if that's gonna. Work. I don't know if that's gonna work for the podcast, but. It comes Just out like a. Listen. It's like a week before Thanksgiving. It comes out. You yeah, might have a podcast come out that week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that, we got, that's, we got jump that's on a, these things, Maggie. But that's a movie that I probably will. See, I, I I wouldn't mind seeing multiple times. Yeah. That, um. Now, now that that's the thing, David. Though that we need to get better at is uh, right now we record these a week in advance, which sometimes means that we're a little bit late to the party for mm-hmm. jumping on some of these uh, different movies. So we need to get to where we're like, we're releasing these things days after, as opposed to like a week. Yeah. We're not there yet. It's we, too much we need, work. We need, what we really ought to start doing is record Sunday night and post it Monday morning. <clears throat> yeah. What we need to start doing, maybe we should start doing live stream Sunday night and then roll that up into a, a into a uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to finish my yeah. sentence because I couldn't figure out where it ended. Yeah, that's that's. Well, okay. I think we've talked about doing that before, but yeah. Red Song is pretty cool. Nope. I don't. The single that book is bigger. I I didn't catch any of what you just said, Maggie. I was about to say, yeah. I don't know how they're going to put it into a single movie. It's twice as big as the biggest Hunger Games book. Wow. I know Sarah read through it. Um, so she'd have a lot more insight on it. It's a lot darker than the Hunger mm-hmm. Games really saying something. Yeah. Now, they, they, they should probably do what they did with uh, Mockingjay and split it into two. It, it has... Not to spoil anything, but it does have it has two parts pretty much that are like two separate things almost. But well, well, you, th- you think about that, like nowadays, that's kind of what they just do. They like they're making movies, but they don't want to tell it all in one because they want to have one good movie and then it makes you go watch the next one to finish the story. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, I honestly well, would be surprised if they did end up doing a two parter to it. That's what they should have done with The Hobbit, too. They should have just done two. See, mm. I, I don't, I, I think with the Hobbit, one movie wouldn't have been enough. But I think three movies was too much to stretch the book across. And I think uh, Lord of the Rings would have been good if they had done two movies for each book too. That's a lot, but they could have done made better because one movie, like each one of those books, is a lot. It's a lot to make into one movie. Yeah. I mean, each book is a thousand pages, and then you also have to think even the extended versions. Of Lord of the Rings leaves out so much good stuff. Hmm. Well, I mean, okay, like twelve hours of movie versus like, like you said, like three thousand plus pages. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. Well, yeah, that, but, but you also got to look at I will the say, fact. I will that... say, I will say the the Peter Jackson trilogy, like that, that. That those movies for for you know actually leaving out so much stuff, I think that is the best adaptation you can get on on a movie screen. Like, I, I, you know, I, I said I said I said that for like you know kind kind of knocking it, but no, I, I still I still think that that is those those movies are still amazing. I, I'm I'm not going to take take away from the movies, but you know they, they could have done stuff better. But I'm I'm still still going to say that you know those movies are amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. they did they did better than like the Harry Potter movies, dude. And the Harry Potter movies are really good. I mean, there's a lot left out of them that annoys me as an avid reader. But overall, like they did a really good job for movie adaptation. Oh my goodness! But Lord of the Rings did better. Speaking of Harry Potter, um, I've heard stuff about them doing a reboot to the franchise. Have you heard stuff about that? Oh yes, very much. It's uh... yeah. What what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Um, it's a big conversation in the Harry Potter community. Which, yeah. But um, I don't know. I think 
it's something that Harry Potter fans have always said is that it'd be really good for them to do where they do a chapter, an episode, um, mm. a season, a book, because there's so much in it. And I would really love to see, especially like the Half Blood Prince, that movie is so different. Like they made up so much stuff for that movie that's completely different than the books. Um, mm. I really like to see them do better. There's, there's, they did really well on the main plot points of Harry Potter, but there are so many smaller plot points in each book that they just completely left out. And I would like to see more of that be fluctuated out. So mm. I think the idea, it's, it's a little sad because they did pretty good with the casting. So it's a different cast they're looking at. And then of course, you know, just what they're going to do about it in today's day and age that might be different than before. That makes me yeah. nervous. Um, but I'm excited about it. I think I've always, I've always said though, that I wish that they would make, I think they would make big money if they took like a early 2000s drama, like TV show, um, and made a, sh- a TV show about the next generation, like Harry Potter's kids. I mean, think mm-hmm. about all of those Weasley cousins, those insane amount of cousins that all yeah. have names is they're all been like flushed out to a small extent but they still have so much they could do with them um and put them all in hogwarts where they're in a boarding school all living there yeah much they could have done with that i think they would just like every day living in hogwarts they could have done so much with that's like a teenage drama and they would have made a lot of money off of it Mm -hmm. like i know that's sort of really random and it's but that's something that i think they would have done so because it's such an amazing mm-hmm. that it is just seeing it, everyday living in it would be really interesting, which you don't get a lot of in the movies. So I think another good thing about the TV show is you'll get to see more of the everyday living in, in Hogwarts because mm-hmm. you get books more, but the movies has to take all that part out to like get there. Yeah. Books. So yeah. Just... Well, cause that's one thing about the movies too, is like the, you know, the books can portray this better because you have, you have, you know, you can take more liberties with it, but with what like a two and a half hour movie, you're condensing an entire school year into two and a half hours. That's mm-hmm. you know, which they really speed through, especially because it's usually the end of the school year that they have to put the most emphasis on. So you're just like, what even happened? How did they get from the beginning to the end yeah. of the school year of any of these movies? So yeah, I I'm excited about it. I definitely like it better than the idea that they were talking about about doing a prequel from Snape's point of view, which I wasn't really yeah. into. I I like the idea of a prequel. I just think he is a horrible person to choose for. Well, didn't they already kind of do that with the Fantastic Beasts movies? No, not like that. Like more of like the time Harry Potter's parents were. Uh, you, you, you're talking about like a prequel, like like more direct prequel to the Harry Potter series. Yeah. So uh, like in the time that Professor Snape was in school, um James and Lily were in school, Remus Sirius, all of them were in school, Peter, all of that. Um I just think focusing on those characters, Snape would be the worst person out of the point of view from. So I really hated that they were making a Snape TV show. Um I just think it'd be better to do someone who could see both like to do like Lily's point of view or something like that because she was friends with Snape. She's friends with, you know, she ended up marrying um, James, things like that. So you could get all the characters from both good and bad sides. But if you picked doing it from Snape's point of view, then that makes Remus and Sirius and James all the bad guys of this show. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that just doesn't make any sense. So that's what's like, that's a terrible plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's right, really that... like him because he's Alan Rickman and Alan, Alan Rickman's awesome, but you know, it's just a little different. So. All right, David, very... that, that, that settles it. We need to have Maggie on and talk about Harry Potter. I could talk yeah, to you we're... about Harry Potter for hours. Sarah just walked in and she was, uh, I, I mentioned that and she was pointing at herself, so we might need to have a, a double double show with uh with uh two well, guests uh, on well tell sarah we, we already got planned to um lord of the rings episode that she's she's 
we already yeah, I'm pretty sure she knows good, about the about the Lord of the Rings episode that we're doing. That's actually, the, that's actually coming up. Um, that's actually coming up in a couple. Actually, I think it's about a month. But uh, about a month. I think it's in. It's talking about water. You guys probably just shouldn't even come on. But you know, we can be like we're going down the road. Yeah, David, we'll just take a week off. <laughs> oh, just just give, even... just um do a Harry Potter episode and give uh, give Maggie and Sarah no, what... that. Here's the problem, David, is we'll get kicked off our own show. That will be like the best best episode, and everyone will be like, "Ah, oh, we love this." But we don't like those uh, crazy random guys who are on like every other episode. Like, give us them. Get rid of David and Wesley. I, I mean, I'm still the producer of the show, so you can't really kick me so far. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's have- true. But but David, but David, see, you only became producer because I ran out of time. True, but so if I if I have more time on my hands, then then I can take back some of some of the the stuff. So true, but you barely have enough time to record as of right now. So I mean, you're right, you're right. But but that's that's because I'm been busy working on uh, the down the rabbit trail stuff so yeah so we we gotta we gotta split our time and use it wisely so true but if we need the one of us on the show then we can we can just we got more time to if we got more time to consider something to can i barely heard suffer. a word you just said it's just it's just glitchy but sure i, I, oh, I got well. the gist that of it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter too much i but, think it's uh, on him yeah, probably. But uh, we're coming up on an hour and 50 minutes now, so uh, we should probably go ahead and uh, close this out, because uh, we, we probably we should. Po- uh, speaking of which, I didn't realize I didn't realize how long last week's episode was. Like, I listened... Oh, or, yeah, yeah. The, I guess yesterday's. I was listening to it earlier today, I think. I guess I would have had to been, because it came out today. Uh, or yesterday, one of the two. But uh, I was listening to it, and I forgot after we had been doing like what's new with you for like 30 minutes or more that we were, cause we were talking about star Wars. I had forgotten that we were talking about Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it had been so long, but and let's go ahead and prob- cut it. Cause that's probably how this one's going to be too. Cause we've been talking yeah, about, yeah, we, we've been doing what's new with you for 40 minutes. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. See you next time down the rabbit trail. I'm just kidding. That was our outro. We're good to go. Let's get out of here, David. All right. That's that works for me. All right, sounds good. See you next week. I say at the end of your outro, is it? Is it? My brain forgot. Never mind. Maggie's brain forgot. We should have Maggie do the whole entire outro. Yeah. All right. All right, Maggie, do do the outro. My brain forgot. I thought that's what it was, and I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. That's not the name of this podcast. Well, just make something up. Yeah, make something up. Also, make sure to tell them to like, comment, and subscribe. That doesn't really fit for Spotify, so figure something out. Well, fo- and follow on whatever wh- whatever you see on your screen here. Here or there, one of the two. See you next time down the rabbit trail. Don't forget to That's like not right. and comment. <laughs> I don't know. It's a trail cast. Okay, I got this. I got this. Well, I won't see you later, guys, but they sure will. So come back later and listen to the trail cast. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. Bye!